The Emissions Reduction Fund, ERF, established in 2014 with funding of a $2.55 billion, is mostly spent. With just a $200 million left to be allocated, the Climate Change Authority this week released a report on the fund's progress that can be best described as magnanimous. The federal government claims that 189 million tons of emissions have been diverted or prevented from entering the atmosphere under the scheme. But research I have done with a co-author from Melbourne Law School has found serious issues, from giving unnecessary funds, to counting decade-old projects as new emissions reductions. While the authority made 26 recommendations for improvement, each is relatively low impact. Most of the recommendations go towards increasing the fund's transparency or removing barriers to participation. While these are laudable aims, there are deeper problems. How should the fund work? At its most basic, the ERF gives private companies and individuals a cash incentive to avoid or sequester greenhouse gas emissions. These businesses or people compete for funding by putting their projects forward at reverse auctions. Read more. How does today's direct action reverse auction work? The fund is unique in Australia's climate policy, in that the legislation that supports it has strong bipartisan support. Even if a change of federal government leads to a new policy for curbing emissions, it's very likely that the basic ERF structure will be carried forward. But despite the fund's importance, there has been surprisingly little detailed academic analysis of it to date. In an effort to redress this, a colleague and I have a paper forthcoming that examines the underlying logic and effect of the fund. The paper focuses specifically on the path into the ERF for landfill operators, although the conclusions stretch further than just those projects. Our conclusions are simple. With the $2.55 billion, the fund has considerable potential to crop the low-hanging fruit of Australia's emissions profile. However, there are serious flaws in how some projects are assessed for funding. Where support is granted to projects that would proceed without it, there is no benefit to the government's intervention. Rather than lopping the low-hanging fruit, we are instead throwing money at the fruit that is already sitting in a bowl on the kitchen bench. How to avoid redundancy In the language of offsetting schemes, assessing a project to see if it needs extra funding to be commercially viable is known as an additionality test. The legislation that underpins the ERF contains three such tests, which are actually very strong. Read more, Australia's biggest emitters opt to wait and see over emissions reduction fund. If these three tests were mandated for all projects submitted to the ERF, it would be filled with projects that truly deliver new environmental benefit. But they are not, and it isn't. There's a simple reason why these tests aren't used in all cases. There are 34 different ways of abating emissions recognized by the ERF, technically referred to as methodologies, from the destruction of methane from piggeries using engineered biodigesters, to avoiding deforestation. Because these activities are so diverse, the legislation that underpins the ERF allows the Department of Environment and Energy to create methodology-specific tests instead, in consultation with industry stakeholders.